Section 2.6, Moments and Centers of Mass. Okay, so we are in OpenStax Calculus Volume 2, discussing moments and center of mass. So the idea of a center of mass is as simple as finding the balancing point on a seesaw. Okay, so if you were imagine being on a playground, um, two kids that are two different sizes, okay, how can we balance the seesaw? That's what we'd be looking for. So let's go ahead and consider two masses on a fulcrum. Okay, so say we've got our fulcrum here. There's our our balancing beam here. Okay, now we have two masses. Now let's go ahead and put our two masses right here. So we have M1 and M2. Now they are at distances respectively of D1, D1, and D2, where those are distances from the origin, from the fulcrum here. Now the question is, how do we find where they balance? Well, these balance whenever, I believe I have that right here, when, the, when we have M1 times D1, the mass times the distance, equals the mass times distance for the other, the other mass here. Okay. So using this image, where our fulcrum is X bar, this is the balancing point or the center of mass okay, in the X, with the X axis, using that image, we get an equation, okay, which is mass 1 times the distance from x1 to x bar, the center of mass, okay, so this is still m1 times d1, mass 2 times distance 2. Okay, so we're going to rearrange this just a bit so that we have, so we can solve here for uh, the x bar, the center of mass. What is the center of mass? All right, so first, this is going to be M1. Now, because X1 is actually less than X bar, because it's to the left, this is going to be X bar minus X1. And the other, because X2 is greater than it's to the right of X bar, this is going to be X2 minus X bar. Okay, let's distribute here, M1 X bar minus M1X1 equals M2X2 minus M2X bar. Okay, rearranging again so that we have all the X bar terms on one side, we get M1X bar plus M2X bar equals M1X1 plus M2X2. So factoring the x bar out of those, we get m1 x1 plus m2 x2 divided by m1 plus m2. All right, so in this particular setup where we have two masses, okay, the total mass is this right here, m1 plus m2. Okay, and this quantity in the numerator here we're going to call that the first moment. Okay, in this case, it is mx. Okay, or often we'll just say that's just m. That is the moment, the first moment for the system. So he, in general, we have this. A theorem. Center of mass of objects on a line. So if we have m1 through mn, these are point masses. So these are like our, in our diagram, our point masses. And they're at points x1, x2, x through xn. Okay, so m1 is at position m or at x1. P point mass mn is at the point xn. Then let m little m equal the sum of those masses. Denote the total mass of the system. Okay, so that's what we just said. M1 plus m2 is the total mass. Now the center of mass is going to be found by finding taking the moment with respect to the origin this right here, which is the product of m times x, m times x, m times x, and then we sum those. And the center of mass is given by x bar equals capital M divided by lowercase m. All right, now, this is all stated in terms of x's, but if we have points where we are also worrying about the y coordinates, it's done almost exactly the same. So to illustrate that, let's take three point masses. These are placed in the xy plane as follows. Okay? 
and these are all in meters. We should note that. All right, so the first thing we'll need to do is find the total mass. So the total mass is 2 plus 6 plus 4, which is 12. Okay. Now, since these are in meters, it's a safe bet that these are all, oh, that's actually said right there, these are all kilograms. We're in the metric system. All right, now, to find mx, okay, or the moment, I'm just going to write it this way, that it's the m, but here we are going to only be concerned with the x coordinates. This is going to be the mass times the x1, so m1 times x1, that is negative 1, from our x coordinate, plus, and we're going to sum these, 6 times 1, plus 4 times 2. Okay, well I believe that is going to be 12. We have 8 plus, yep, we have a negative 2 plus a 6 plus an 8, so we have 12. Alright, so our center of mass with respect to the x-axis here is going to be 12 divided by 12, so that is capital M divided by lowercase m. And so x-bar is 1. Now we're going to do this also with the y-axis. Now this, the total mass is the same. So next we will calculate M, capital M, with respect to the y-axis. Okay, this is going to be 2 times 3 plus 6 times 1 plus 4 times negative 2, which is in total 12 minus 8, that is 4. So y bar is 4 divided by the total mass, 12, so 1 third. So these are both in meters, so the center of mass is this point. Okay, 1 comma 1 third meters. Okay, now this will get a little ambiguous because I have an m for the x's and an m for the y's. Okay, so I'm going to make sure and label that better on the second one. Okay, but because of the different axes, actually I'll go ahead and label it, the way, because of the axes, okay, the x bar is actually the moment with respect to y, and for the y bar, our center of mass there, this, these are actually with respect to x. It's kind of because of the way things are oriented, we have that going on. All right, let's ha take three more point masses, and we'll find the center of mass. And again, I'll point out on every video, this all this material can be found at this URL. This is from OpenStax Calculus Volume 2, which is free and open source, so you can make as many copies as you want. Okay, so these and these are also in meters. So let us first find the total mass. There are three point masses. So our total mass is 5 plus 3 plus 2, which is 10. We have 10 kilograms. Right, now, our moment with respect to x, and actually I'm going to start with the moment with respect to y, because that will be my x coordinates. So this will take my first mass times my x value. All right, that is negative 2, plus 3 times 2, okay, plus 2 times negative 3 which is a grand total of negative 10, negative 6, negative 16, plus 6, that is negative 10. So that places x bar as negative 10 over 10, or negative 1. All right, let's find the moment with respect to x. That will take 5 times negative 3, plus 3 times 3, these are my y coordinates, 2 times negative 2 which is negative 15 plus 9 minus 4, negative 10 as well. All right, so my y bar will be negative 10 divided by 10, which is also negative 1. So the center of mass here is negative 1, negative 1 meters. Okay, so the next place we are going to move is away from point masses to something called a lamina. Okay, these are two-dimensional sheets. These are assumed to be thin, okay, as in infinitesimally small 
thin, okay? So it's assume it's thin enough to have only two dimensions. We want to locate the center of the region called a centroid, okay? Now we want to start with a useful principle called the symmetry principle. This will come up several times. If a region is symmetric, okay, about a certain line, then the centroid is on that line. So if we have, for instance, a triangle, let's just say my graph is not perfect, my sketch is not perfect, but say it's symmetric along this line. If it's symmetric on that line, then that means on that line somewhere is my centroid or my two-dimensional center of mass. Okay, That will come in handy if with some of the functions we're going to run into. All right, so as we are finding the center of mass for a thin plate or a lamina, we have this information. Okay, so first off, our region is bounded above by a graph of a continuous function f of x, below by the x-axis, and the left and the right by a and b. Okay, so imagine graphing that like so. We've got a function f of x, and our sheet is this region right here. So if this is our region, then these formulas will work here. Now, we're going to assume that rho is the density of this sheet. Okay, so it's got some sort of density to it. It's made of some material. And so we can make these statements. The mass of the lamina is m equals rho times the integral from a to b. Okay, so the mass, or the, the, of the density, times the area of that region, okay, will give us the total mass. The moments, m of x and my, of the lamina are given by m of x is rho times the integral from a to b of f of x squared divided by 2 dx. And the moment with respect to y, the y-axis is rho times the integral from a to b times x f of x dx. Okay, and just like we did a second ago, to find x bar and y bar, we will take my divided by m and mx divided by m, respectively. Okay, so let's look at an example here. Example 48. Let r be the region bounded above by the graph f of x equals the square root of x and below by the x-axis over the interval 0 to or 1 to 4. Find the centroid. Okay, so we will have to find three things. First, we want to find m, the mass itself. Now, if you notice, they do not tell us what the density is, so we are going to assume, by default, that rho is equal to 1. Okay, the density actually doesn't affect anything when it comes to finding the center of mass, because if you look up here, if we were to divide this expression by this expression, we have a row in each. They cancel out. Okay, same idea with my and m, lowercase m. The rows cancel out, so actually the, the density is irrelevant. But we do have to keep that, keep that in mind. Okay, there will be places that's important, just not when we're finding the center of mass. So this is going to be row 1 times the integral from, zero, from 1 to 4 of f of x. Okay, let's see, yes, our mass is just f of x, so square root of x dx. Okay, and that is, if we work that out, 2 thirds x to the 3 over 2, evaluated from 1 to 4, which is 14 thirds. And I'm skipping some of the algebra there, okay, and the, some of the calculus ones, so make sure you check that, of course. Okay, to find mx, based on our equation, that is our rho times the integral of, uh, from 1 to 4, of f of x squared. So that is the square root of x squared over 2 dx, which is just x over 2. Okay, so integrating that, we'll have x squared over 4 from 1 to 4, which is 15 over 4. Lastly, our my is our rho times the integral of x f of x, so x times the square root of x dx, and this is from 1 to 4. And using some of our 
algebraic properties and our calculus. This is going to be 2 fifths x to the 5 over 2 from 1 to 4, which is 62 over 5. Again, all, as always, pause these videos, go back, make sure that these things all make sense, that you believe everything that you're seeing. Okay, now to finish this out, we're not done. To finish, we have to say, okay, x bar is my divided by m, which is 62 over 5 divided by 14 over 3. which with a little rearranging, that should be 93 over 35. Okay, and our y bar, we will take mx divided by our mass. So our x moment with respect to x divided by our mass. Okay, so that will be four, 15 over 4 divided by 14 over 3. And again with some rearranging, 45 over 56. So our centroid, our center of mass, is 93 out of 35, 45 out of 4, 56 meters. That is the position. And it does not actually say that. We're going, I'm just going to go ahead and assume that it is in the metric system. We weren't told otherwise. Next, we have same setup. Let R be the region bounded above by the graph f of x equals x squared and below by the x-axis over 0 to 2. Let's find the centroid. Okay, well, our mass is going to be equal to, again, we are not told what rho is, and it's irrelevant. So I'm going to assume it's 1, and I can actually leave it off. So the mass is the integral from 0 to 2 of x squared dx. I'm going to go ahead and move on to this one. mx is the integral from 0 to 2 of f of x squared over 2 dx. And my is the integral from 0 to 2 of x f of x dx. So for the first one, we have x cubed over 3 evaluated from 0 to 2, which is 8 thirds. For the next, it is going to be x to the 5th over 10 evaluated from 0 to 2, which is 16 over 5. And last, x to the 4th or 4 from 0 to 2, which will be 4. So our x bar is going to be my, which is 4, over m, which is 8 thirds. Okay, so our center of mass in the x direction is 3 over 2. Our y bar will be mx, 16 over 5, divided by our m, which is 8 over 3. And that will be 6 over 5. So our center of mass here is 3 over 2, comma, 6 over 5. And I'm going to assume meters again. Okay. Now, just as we went from integrals to integrals between the integral of the area between curves, we are next going to have a lamina bounded by two functions. Okay, so the equations are going to be very similar. Previously, it was the mass was the integral of f of x. Now we have the integral of f of x minus g of x because we have a lower boundary. The moments, well, my is very similar. My was x times f of x. Now it's x times f of x minus g of x. Okay, mx is a little different. It previously was f of x squared over 2. Now it's f of x squared minus g of x squared over 2. Okay, so we have this slightly different. It's slightly different. Now, finding the coordinates is the same. All right, so let's take a moment to write those down. Pause this. 
do that and then we will jump into a, an example. Okay. So let's let R be the region bounded above by the graph f of x equals 1 minus x squared and below by the graph of g of x equals x minus 1. Okay, well our mass is going to be, we don't know rho, we're going to assume it's 1 and then we can leave it off. Alright, well this is going to be integral from hmm, where am I going to integrate? I don't actually know, so let's take a moment to sketch our graph. 1 minus x squared will look something like this x minus 1 looks something like this all right so those two certainly intersect each other and just by inspecting the graphs both of them are going to be 1 are going to be 0 at 1 so one of those places is 1 and I'm going to speculate now who knows if my graph is really to scale but I'm going to speculate that that's negative 2 that they're going to be in common so if I plug negative 2 into one of them, I get negative 3. If I plug negative 2 in here, that is going to be 1 minus 4, which is negative 3. All right, so the other intersection point, this point right around here, is negative 2. So I am over the interval negative 2 to 1. All right, so the mass from negative 2 to 1 of f of x minus g of x. All right, so that's 1 minus x squared minus x minus 1. Okay, which is, put that right here, integral from negative 2 to 1. Grouping some things, I get negative x squared minus x plus 2 dx. So the algebra there is something we need to make sure we have. And then that is going to be 9 over 2. So I'm leaving, going to leave the calculus, calculus 1 portion to you. Alright, we've got that. Now mx. mx is the integral from negative 2 to 1 of the integral. And this is going to be the same, one of the some similar ideas here. 1 minus x squared minus, or squared, minus x minus 1 squared dx. Okay, now with some algebra and then I kept some calculus 1 in there, you get negative 27 over 10. These are just the power rule. My okay, is the integral from negative 2 to 1 of x 1 minus x squared minus x minus 1 which is negative 9 over 4. All right, so to find our centroid, x bar is my over m, and y bar equals mx over m. Okay, so that would be negative 9 fourths over 9 over 2. Which is going to be negative 1 half. And mx is negative 27 over 10 divided by our mass of 9 over 2. Which is negative 3 fifths. So, our center of mass is negative one-half, comma, negative three-fifths. Okay, number 51. Again, we are bounded between two functions. Just remember those rules that we have. All right, so, our mass going to be equal to the integral of, we don't actually know the region yet, of 6 minus x squared minus 3 minus 2x 
dx. Okay, so let's go ahead and sketch this. I've got 6 minus 2x. So say this is 6. 6 minus x squared is that function. 3 minus 2x. Okay, so for my sketch here, I've got something that looks kind of like that, so I could use technology to figure out where these intersect. One of them is at 3, and the other is at negative 1, so this is from negative 3, or negative 1 to 3. Okay, I'll go ahead and do some of the algebra here. Okay, this is going to be integral from negative 1 to 3 of negative x squared Okay, plus 2x plus 3 dx, which is negative x cubed over 3 plus x squared plus 3x, evaluated from negative 1 to 3, which is 32 over 3. Okay, to find mx, going to be the integral from negative 1 to 3 of first function squared, upper function in this case, 6 minus x squared. So we have 1 half 6 minus x squared squared minus 3 minus 2x squared. Oh, dx, can't leave that off which is, that's going to turn out to be 416 over 15, which is roughly 27.73 repeating. Right, my is going to be the integral from negative 1 to 3 of x, f of x minus g of x. Okay, that minus 3 minus 2x dx which will be 32 over 3. Okay, so let's just point this out. We have got our mass is 32 over 3. We have got our mx and our my. Okay, so our center of mass is going to be... Well, I guess I better do that first. x bar will be my divided by m, which is 1. y bar will be mx, so 416 over 15, divided by our mass, 32 over 3, which is 13 over 5. So our center of mass is 1, 13 over 5. Okay, next we have a region bounded above by the graph 4 minus x squared and below by the x-axis. We want to find the centroid of that region. Now remember we have something called the symmetry principle, which says that if, there, if our region is symmetric, then the line of symmetry, our, our centroid is going to be on that. Okay, so let's go ahead and graph, sketch this graph here. 4 minus x squared... Okay, so 4 minus x squared is symmetric, and our region is entirely this. So the line of symmetry is the y-axis. So that means that the centroid is going to lie on that line. Okay, that means that the center of mass with respect to x, x bar, is going to be 0. It's going to be on that line. So we don't actually need to figure out that part of the problem. Okay, so let's see. We need to find where the boundaries of this region are. And they are right here at 2, negative 2. So our mass will be the integral from negative 2 to 2 of 4 minus x squared 
dx. So 4x minus x cubed over 3, evaluated from 2 to negative 2, or negative 2 to 2. It's going to be 32 over 3. Okay, now we do not need to find my because we would use that to find x bar. We need mx. Okay, so mx is going to be the integral of 1 half, oh, this is from negative 2 to 2, 1 half times 4 minus x squared squared. Okay. And leaving that multiplying to you, this is 256 over 15, which means y bar is 256 out of 15 divided by 32 over 3, which places our y bar at 8 out of 5, 8 fifths. So our center of mass is 0, 8 fifths. All right. Now the last thing we have to discuss in this section is called the theorem of Pappus, and it really has nothing to do with centroids, but it does sort of fall in line there. Okay, it's all about volume, so it's a simpler way to find volume um, for certain figures. Okay, so if R is a region in the plane, and L is the line in the plane that we're revolving around. Okay, so L is our axis of revolution then the volume of the solid revolution formed by revolving R around L is equal to the area of R multiplied by the distance traveled by the centroid. All right, well, let's begin with this right here. We've got that our re re region R is a circle of radius 2 centered at 4, 0. We're going to use this to find the volume of the torus generated by that. Okay, so to begin with, if you take our region here, it's at 4, 0, and it has a radius of 2. Okay, now we need to find the volume of the torus generated. So if you took this shape and you went around the axis, we would get something that is a three-dimensional shape resembling a donut. Okay, that is a torus. So, saying it's a torus is just saying what shapes formed there. All right, now, what the theorem of Pappus says is we need to find, well, it says the volume is equal to the area of R. Okay, so the area of that, let's go ahead and do that over here, the area of that circle, which would be pi R, radius is 2, squared, so 4 pi multiplied by the distance d traveled by the centroid. Okay, so how far does the center of that circle travel? Okay, so if we took that all the way around, what would be that distance? And it comes down to finding the, the uh, circumference of its path. Okay, well, because it's positioned at 4, okay, because it's at 4, 0, it travels a distance of 2 pi times 4. That's the distance from the origin. So it travels a distance of 8 pi. That means our volume is 32 pi squared. Okay, so if you're given the equation of one of these, then perhaps you would want to sketch that first. That's almost always our first step. Sketch it, and then try to find out these different things. And if this theorem of Pappus actually, if it applies, then all you need to do is find the area and the distance that it's traveling, the circumference there of that circle, and multiply those two. All right, so let R be a circle of radius 1 centered at 3, 0. Okay, so... 3, 0, and it has a radius of 1. Okay. The 
Theorem of Pappas says we need to find the area and the distance traveled. So the area of that is pi radius of 1 squared, so just pi. The distance it travels, okay, because it's positioned at 3, okay, when it goes around, the circumference of that will be 2 pi times 3, or 6 pi. Theorem of Pappas says the volume is 6 pi squared. Okay, and that is the end of this section. So make sure that you go back and make sure you understand everything that was said through here.